fact, I like Toto's. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Hey, new hood nature. Uh, your childhood is a lie. He's about to explain why, man. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, funny thing about that. The sound of the lion in the MGM logo was actually the roar of a tiger. And it's because tigers were seen to have a louder, more intimidating roar, where lions had more of an aggressive, low frequency call. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> YouTube it. YouTube lion versus tiger roar. A lion no, will okay. make you defecate bricks, but a tiger will make you sh your soul. You know the majestic shrieking call of the bald eagle in the beginning of literally every western movie? Well, it was never a bald eagle making that sound. That famous cry was actually a red-tailed hawk. And it's because the really? symbol of America just sounds like a seagull with laryngitis. Go ahead, YouTube it. I'm not going anywhere. The bald eagle takes credit for something that- Why can't he show me? Why can't he show me? That was never his in the first place. That is the bird we put on our flag. <laughs> Some jokes just write themselves. Remember the- <laughs> dolphin sound from spongebob well you were lied to because it was never a dolphin it was really a sped up edited call of this australian bird called a kookaburra or what? however you pronounce it oh you didn't hear it also if you're old enough to remember this show first of all god what bless is you. this and second the dolphin call in this show was also a modified kookaburra hmm okay one more wow. mufasa's roar was actually made by using a combination of a tiger, an F-16 fighter jet, and a really <laughs> pissed off grizzly bear. It's called Wait, Lion why, King though? for a reason. The F that bug. Wait, why use a grizzly bear though? <laughs> well, it was only a matter of time. That is a species of longhorn beetle. There's like 35,000 types of whatever the hell this is, but this comment says it's a chirping longhorn, so I'm gonna just go with that. Longhorn beetles are famous for two things. Number one, they do not like to be touched, which is why they usually sound like Satan's plumbing. And number two, they're incredibly dangerous. But not to us. Because these oh, yeah, beetles are one of the biggest how? ops a tree can have. Since their larvae feed on plant tissue, they often destroy trees from the inside. Adult longhorns will actually girdle the tree branches to turn it into a nursery for their children. The complete removal of the bark. What? They completely removed the children. bark? Which is why the Asian longhorn beetle is one of the worst Damn, invasive man. species in America. Since their kids end up killing more wood than erectile dysfunction. In the United States, this longhorn hell spawn is a threat to a Good third of the dude. urban tree species, which ends up costing us, get this, over $600 billion in damage. You might be wondering how something how? so destructive even ended up here in the first <coughs> place. That's easy. Us. We basically <coughs> Ubered them here. They were accidentally introduced to the U.S. and Canada. Yeah, isn't all invasive species just like, we accidentally, someone just like, got it, and then they're like, oh yeah, let me, well, I don't want this anymore. So let me just, uh, release it into the wild, right? in 1996 through woodpacking material shipped from Asia. And the bastards have been walling out ever since. Oh, and they can fly. Cause why the f not? Because swallowing. why the fuck not? What the in fuck rabbit is hole. this? Seagulls are the feathery antichrist and I'm prepared to make it your problem. First we gotta acknowledge the Holy fuck. The fact that a seagull's diet plan is really just anything that fits down their garbage chute of a throat. This includes rabbits, other birds like pigeons, starlings, and baby ducks. Oh some British seagulls have even started spawn wiping their own chicks by swallowing their children whole. And some have even gone as far as to start attacking and murdering. They're spawn killing, bruh? Ah, uh, and it's their own children? Ah, uh, come on, man. Some British seagulls have even started spawn wiping their own chicks by swallowing their children whole. And some have even gone as far as to start attacking and murking sheep. Yes. Sheep? Sheep. There's also the minor fact that seagulls have started seeking out baby fur seals just so they could rip their eyeballs out and eat them. And after effectively blinding the newborn seal, the seagull will proceed to eat it alive, often starting with the most sensitive spots. These air bunnies will even rip the blubber off the backs of baby southern right whales when they surface, and they've even started harassing beach porpoises. Yes, Bro, holy they even fuck. with whales. And somehow, that's not the worst part. I'm not kidding when I say this fly- This is literally the worst bird ever. Hellspawn will legit put anything on the list. Cause seagulls in the UK have even started snatching up people's dogs. In 2015, a Yorkie had to be put out of its misery after getting jumped by a gang of goals, leaving him basically crippled. In 2019, a Chihuahua named Gizmo was kidnapped by a rogue goal and carried off to where it's not Gizmo. I don't think they ever found him. Not in Gizmo. Another Chihuahua named Bella made the mistake of sneaking outside through Bella. An open door. That movie ended with Bella getting turned into past tense after a flock of gulls basically pecked her to pieces. Bella! Seagulls are just Hannibal Lecters with feathers and frequent flyer miles. Oh, and they've murked people too. Okay, what the fuck is this? This is that, this is the shit off of Ice Age. Uh, the one with like the, there's, there's like, they gotta get to the raft. 
There's like the boat, and this is like one of the alligators that's like hunting. I swear to God. Okay, three things. Yes, it's real. It's a gharial, and it's related to crocodiles and alligators. And before you judge him, look at this picture. This is a male gharial giving about a hundred of his babies. Maybe's a piggyback ride the way only a man truly crippled by child support can. If you've never seen this Jurassic reject before, it's because out of the entire crocodilian family, which also includes alligators and caiman, the gharials by far the most limited edition. There's only about 600 to 700 of these guys left, and in the wild you can only find them in India and Nepal. Which is high key messed what? up, because gharials eat mostly fish, meaning they've never turned a human into a pack. I mean, they do sometimes eat the corpses of people left in the Ganges River, but they're already dead and... No True. one else is going to eat them, so it'd be like that. No one else is going to eat them. So. <laughs> the reason this LSD water gecko is endangered is because people destroy their homes, poison their water with metals, and hunt them to make penis enlarging pills or something like that. Wait, they what? don't work, by the way. Also, the reason they have that <laughs> nose job is because they evolved to hunt fish underwater, and that nose lets them swim with no resistance. Snakes, turtles, and small wow. birds, and uh, yeah, they swallow their prey whole. Which is why they'll also swallow stones to help with digestion and to help keep them underwater without constantly floating up. Also, I can't tell you what I they're see, on, I see. but whatever it is, it looks life-changing. The type that makes you smell, color, and taste music. Rhinos are one of the most aggressive animals in Africa, but that's only because they're basically legally blind. They can't tell the difference between an actual predator uh, and bruh, a butterfly, so they just charge at anything that moves. And fun Wait, fact, what? you don't even have to be alive to get the smoke, because apparently anything also includes cars because rhinos are just tanks with mood swings My but in zoos without the point of predators ask anyone who's ever worked with them and they'll tell you rhinos are really just the world's heaviest lapdog that wasn't even really a joke rhinos in captivity behave just like armor-plated puppies what some rhinos will even come running when you call their name and most of them will roll over just so you can scratch their belly look at them the though. biggest land animal on the planet that isn't an elephant yet a black rhino could actually beat usain bolt in a race with a top speed of 35 miles per hour a rhino could sprint fast enough oh to get a ticket in the God. school zone Rhinos have sensitive skin and really sensitive feet, so they walk, jog, and run all on their toes. A rhino's closest relative isn't an elephant or a hippo. It's actually closest related to the horse. What? And this weird looking dude from Ice Age called a taper. This picture went viral because people believe that they were dying to rhino's horn pink to prevent it from getting murked by poachers. But this picture, it's fake. What they actually started doing is poisoning the horn in a way that doesn't hurt the rhino, but anyone that tries to cut into it will probably end up in the hospital. We have some time left, so here's what it looks like when a rhino gets to zoomies. Look at him. What a cute little guy. I wish the video was a little bigger, but actually, you might be onto something. Better can start today oh, with a better online ads. education. I don't from care. A I don't care. I don't care. Someone help us. Okay, so fun fact: a rhino's closest relative is the horse. We all know that. Okay, good. Oh, and weirdly enough, zebras too. So rhinos so unicorns do exist. The wolf. are basically tanky horned horses. Now this unit is a Lasmotherium, but because that huge <coughs> thick horn growing out of its forehead, streets call it the Siberian unicorn. They are around about forty thousand years ago, and just like rhinos, that horn was made only forty thousand. AKA the same stuff found in your hair and fingernails. This PED pony could have grown to fifteen feet in length and violated the scales at a minor only, ten thousand pounds. Years, also, a Lasmotherium was about six eight at the shoulders. That is a whole ass LeBron. This walking that tank was the last surviving a member of Elasmotherinae. And Elasmotherinae was basically a family of prehistoric rhinoceroses that got vaulted for plot development reasons. Which means the animal today most closely related to this land before time tank sized unicorn is, yeah, the rhino. So technically, rhinos are just modern day legally blind Weight Watchers unicorns. Well, actually, bicorns, because, you know, most have that horn. Unicorn. Why does this horn look like that? That's horns edited, are alive, right? but if this one pulls up, you won't be. What's a hill that you're willing to die on a thousand percent of the time? Zebras are black with white stripes, and nobody ever believes me when I say it. I, I already I know what you're going to say before they you are. say it, but hear me out. Their stomachs might be white, but that's just their fur. If you shave a zebra completely, yeah. their skin will be Look black. Look at their nose, too, If you too, think right? I'm lying, one of the only parts of a zebra without fur is its snout, and it's black yeah. enough to get a pass. Yeah. But if you really want me to be a nerd about it, I zebra fur this. grows from follicles that have melanocyte cells, which gives them their color. But the white part of a zebra's fur is where the melanocytes are deactivating, meaning it's only white because there aren't any pigments. Which means a zebra's default color is actually black. Which means this biracial donkey, which isn't a joke by the way, zebras are closer to wild donkeys than actual horses, just saying. Just the Oreo say. donkey is actually black, but with white stripes. But honestly, I didn't even need to make this video. This one was voiced by Chris Rock. That's literally all the proof I true. need. True. I know it's a small hill, Fucking but I'll still true. die on it. <laughs> 
At 25, that hibernation doesn't mean the bears just sleep through the entire winter. I already made a video about this, but I feel like this is the best way to explain it. So imagine, right, you walk into work and you realize you somehow forgot your phone charger. You wouldn't just turn the phone off because then you couldn't use it and people wouldn't be able to call you. So instead, you go on power save mode to reduce how much battery you use until you can get back to your charger. That is high key what hibernation is. It's power save mode for animals to get through times where there's less food and therefore less energy around. It's not sleep though, because anything that can sleep for three months straight probably isn't waking back up. And the animal version of power save mode is torpor. To save energy, an animal in torpor will lower their body temperature, heart rate, and metabolism to the bare minimum needed to survive. Wait. Speaking of bare minimum, bears don't actually hibernate. Not like for real, hibernation is basically a long-term, deeper version of torpor. An animal that's a true hibernator, like a chipmunk or something, will stay in power save mode for almost the entire winter. When a bear goes into torpor, it lasts shorter periods of time. Which means bears actually go in and out of torpor, which is why some bears will walk around their den in the middle of the winter when everybody thinks they're hibernating. But the big difference you need to remember is that bears can respond faster wow. to danger than an animal that's full on hibernating. Which means if you mess with a bear thinking it won't wake up, Smokey will have the energy and the motivation to fuck up your way of life. <laughs> and then you True. won't be able to wake up. This cuddlefish So it's is nothing like over the hedge where you could just, you gotta be quiet when you're taking the food from the bear, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing like that, I guess. Alright. Good to know. Remember, that is that bears can respond wake faster up. to danger than an animal that's full on hibernating. Which means if you mess with a bear thinking it won't wake up, Smokey will have the energy and the motivation to fuck up your way of life. And then you won't be able to wake up. This cuttlefish is wearing 3D glasses, but it's for science. Cuttlefish hunt for by science? extending and shooting out their tentacles to grab and trap their prey. So to see how a cuttlefish sees, scientists velcroed a pair of 3D glasses between their eyes. And just for the record, they velcroed them because the cuttlefish kept getting annoyed and snatching them off, and something about that mental image makes me smile on the inside. With the glasses taped to them, we found out that cuttlefish actually see the world a lot like we do. When you reach for something like up. your phone, you use both eyes to figure out exactly how far the object is and how far you have to reach. This is called stereopsis. And it turns out cuttlefish mm. use depth perception too. Because when the cuttlefish ah. wore the 3D glasses and watched film clips, they would react the same way they would if they saw prey in the water, by using 3D vision to judge the distance and snatch the prey. And we know this because when one of the lens was blacked out and they could only see out one eye, it took the cuttlefish a little longer to figure out just where exactly the food was. So yeah, cuttlefish use depth perception just like you and me. And if you don't care Ooh. about that at all, let's just appreciate the fact that some guy went through years of school and student loans just to end up getting paid to put glasses on a discount octopus. And that just makes me happy in a way I don't totally understand. <laughs> Business casual. Oh, fucking true. Oh, an ad right afterwards too, of course. Of course we get an ad, man. Yo, that's fucking hilarious, man. That was gold. That was gold. Yo, shout out to fucking Casual Geographic, man. Hey, make sure to go subscribe to him too, yeah?